Greetings. My name is Alan Bailey, and I am chair of the Coretta Scott King Book Awards Committee. I'd like to thank all of you for joining us today as we celebrate the winners of the 2020 Coretta Scott King Book Awards. We gather to honor the authors and illustrators who have produced outstanding works that represent, reflect, and extend the dream and vision of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Just as we've come to recognize and appreciate Dr. King's message as one intended for all races, cultures, and religions, the CSK Book Award titles are recognized as books that reflect universal human values. The Coretta Scott King Award was named after Mrs. King to honor her courage and determination in continuing her husband's work for peace and brotherhood. We acknowledge that our honorees are the individuals whose hard work, dedication, and creativity make this wonderful event possible. This year marks the 25th anniversary of the John Steptoe New Talent Award. This award was established to affirm new talent and to offer visibility to excellence in writing and illustration. The first recipient of this award was Sharon Draper for Tears of a Tiger, published by Simon & Schuster in 1995. The award is named in memory of children's author and illustrator John Steptoe. Steptoe's work came to national attention in 1969 when his first book, Stevie, appeared in Life magazine. Stevie was hailed as a new kind of book for black children. Steptoe began writing the book at age 16 and was 18 when the book was published. During his career, he won numerous awards, including the Coretta Scott King Book Award, the Caldecott Honor Medal, and a host of others. Congratulations to all of our winners from 1995 to 2020. Greetings. I'm Susan Polos, and I will be presenting the 2020 Coretta Scott King John Steptoe Author Award for New Talent to Alicia D. Williams for Genesis Begins Again, a Caitlin DeLuy book published by Athenaeum Books for Young Readers, an imprint of Simon & Schuster Children's Publishing. In this raw, realistic, painful, and impactful debut novel, Williams tells the story of 13-year-old Genesis Anderson. Genesis' father lets her know that he wishes she'd been born light-skinned like her mother instead of dark like him. Her grandmother reinforces this, as do her classmates who taunt her, calling her charcoal and eggplant. When these classmates present her with a list of 100 reasons why we hate Genesis, filled with self-loathing, Genesis continues the list. After she moves to a new school, however, Genesis finds real friends and a teacher who recognizes her talent. With the realization that all those around her are fighting their own battles, Genesis comes to see her own worth and break the cycle of self-hatred. Alicia Williams' coming-of-age story will motivate young readers to explore their own beliefs and behaviors and the social implications of colorism. Written in perfect pitch, Williams has created an authentic, unforgettable story of a complex family, a vulnerable young girl, and a journey of self-acceptance that only begins at the end of the story. This is an extraordinarily brave and honest work with a powerful message to young people about understanding the past, moving forward, and understanding like Genesis that it's always possible to begin again. Congratulations, Alicia D. Williams, on your award. My granny said, Lee, when someone gives you a compliment, just say thank you. And somehow, I forgot this lesson when Genesis was published. People kept saying, what a wonderful story. You're so brave to write it. I struggled with this because honestly, I was terrified. Colorism is a topic that we swept under the rug. We're guilty of it. 
every colonized country, and yet we don't correct it, heal it, or change it. We pass it down generation to generation like an heirloom. I was afraid voices would say, now girl, you know we don't talk about that. So me, brave? No. To me, brave are the activists, past and present, taking their voices and fight to the streets, facing tear gas and batons and arrests. Those recording injustices on their cell phone and, and calling it out when it happens, speaking up in the face of terrorism. Brave are the mothers and fathers who bury their children due to some evil befalling them. Those having to face a biased justice system and still face each day with a fiery spirit to not back down. Brave are the frontline workers who serve in our hospitals, ring up our groceries, and deliver our quarantine splurges, knowing that each encounter could possibly expose them to a death sentence, yet pushing through each day past their fear. Brave were our ancestors who marched, the ones hosed down, faced dogs, and got beaten and bloodied. People like the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and his wife, Coretta Scott King, who we honor in this legacy year after year. So for me, brave for writing a story? But then I think about the five-year-olds who, who already learned a negative message about self-worth that they won't even choose a black doll over a white one or choose a skin tone crayon. I think of them growing up and quickly realizing that their brown skin will be judged and even feared. Maybe it is brave to write a story to make them question what beautiful is and define it on their own. And yes, remind them that yes, yes, that their brown, dark, and light skin is to be adored because they are indeed lovable. And to empower our people to question colorism, change it and love us some us, especially when the outside world doesn't. Then yes, maybe I am brave and I accept this new talent award. And I thank you for considering me worthy. Thank you for each committee and board member. Thank you for every single person who has had a hand in making this book come to fruition and out into the world. Thank you for every reader who has passed it on to someone else. And thank you to my beloved friends, and my beloved family. I thank everyone who has dared to be brave even when your knees buckle for our very existence to breathe, create, stand, speak, run, march, sit, sleep, shop, vote, love, and read. It's brave. Thank you for plucking my voice from the many. And if there's another reason you saw fit to choose me, then you can tell me when we meet. Because like my granny said, Lee, when someone gives you a compliment, just say thank you. She's right. Thank Hello, I am Jewel Davis and I will be presenting the 2020 Coretta Scott King John Steptoe Illustrator Award for new talent to April Harrison for What is Given from the Heart, written by Patricia C. McKissick and published by HarperCollins Children's Books, a division of HarperCollins Publishers. With a simple yet impactful mantra of what is given from the heart reaches the heart, we are treated to a timeless tale about the nature of kindness and giving. Harrison's illustrations infuse this heartfelt tale with warmth. Her textural and pattern mixed media and painted collage pieces provide an exceptionally distinguishable style. Using a muted pastel palette, elongated perspective, and careful attention to detail, Harrison's illustrations reflect the strength of the Black community and the dignity and pride that shines through even in hardship. Harrison has created a beautiful work of art that supports this universal story about the uplifting power of community and compassion. Congratulations, April Harrison, on your award. Hello, I'm April Harrison, coming to you remotely from Greenville, South Carolina, during this COVID-19 pandemic. And I would like to take a little time right now just to thank all our first responders and the essential businesses that for their commitment and sacrifice 
we thank you and you would definitely appreciate it. I would also like to pray for those who've lost loved ones during this pandemic. I'd like to thank my Heavenly Father for today, for his promises. I would like to thank the committee of the Coretta Scott King John Step to Awards. It's an honor, a great honor. One I didn't expect, but I appreciate so much. Thank you. I would like to thank all the people at Random House, Swartz and Wade. I would like to thank you, Rachel Cole, my art director, for your patience and perseverance. Um, and thank you just for believing in me, a newbie that you found on the internet. Thank you so much. I would like to thank the ALA committee. I would like to thank you for your dedication and your hard work. You are definitely appreciated. Thank you to my agent, Regina Brooks. She believed in me even before the book was released. So Regina, thank you. I would like to thank you to all the nominees for your work is to be celebrated. Thank you to my family and friends, my sounding boards, my advisors, my definite critics. <laughs> thank you for your love and your patience and for your ears, I appreciate that. You are loved and know that I wouldn't take you for granted for the world, but thank you for being there for me. And last but not least, I'd like to thank Patricia McKissick for whom without, I would not have been able to illustrate such a beautiful, beautiful book. It's a book about the heart and it touched my heart, which made me want to actually do the illustrations. Patricia, thank you so much. My only one regret is that I did not get to meet Patricia in person, but I felt her presence during some of my illustrations. I've also left tributes in the book for Patricia and for those who love Patricia. You'll find them mostly in the first and last pages, but I have them sprinkled throughout. Um, just think of numbers and you might guess what they are. But again, it's an honor and a privilege to have been selected for the Coretta Scott King John Steptoe New Talent Award for Illustration. Again, thank you. Hello, library friends. I'm Christina Vortia, and I'll be presenting the 2020 Coretta Scott King Author Honor Award to 2020-2021 National Ambassador for Young People's Literature for 2020 and 2021, Jason Reynolds for his book, Look Both Ways, A Tale in Ten Blocks, a Caitlin Bluey book published by Anthony and Books for Young Readers, an imprint of Simon & Schuster's Children's Publishing. In 10 stories told during the walk home from school, Jason Reynolds weaves the triumphs and challenges of a community of young people trekking 10 city blocks one afternoon. As these students embark on their respective way home, Readers journey with them through strong friendships, scary routes home, terminally ill parents, bullying, homophobia, and the philosophical highlights of water booger bears. Reynolds expertly delves beyond the surface of the mundane and reveals a deeper humanity and strength of the human spirit through the eyes of ordinary kids just trying to find their way home. Congratulations, Janice Jason Reynolds, on your award. Hey everybody, it's Jason Reynolds, and um, I just want to very quickly say thank you so much to the Coretta Sky King Committee for uh, for awarding me with the CSK honor for Look Both Ways. Um, I'm truly, truly grateful. Uh, it means the world to me. And also, really quickly, I just want to say thank y'all in general just for existing. I appreciate you. You've helped a lot of us uh, along our careers by making sure that we're being recognized for the hard work. There's so many people who have come before and after me and with me, and, and, and I'm, I'm grateful for everyone involved um, who's doing this work, specifically thinking about the lives of black children. Um, I also want to thank my publishing company, Simon & Schuster, my editor, Caitlin DeLui, my agent, Elena Giovanazzo, who none of this stuff would be possible without them. They're the ones who basically keep me from, you know, keep, keep me in check. <laughs> so to speak, uh, really, and, and to everybody else also, really quickly, to everybody else who's being honored and awarded, uh, congratulations. I really wish that for everyone who this is your first time, I'm so sorry you're going to miss your time on the dais, but I promise you, because I know most of you, 
uh, your talent will no doubt get you back to the dais and you'll have your 6.30 a.m., 7 o'clock procession and we'll be singing Lift Every Voice and Sing in no time. But congratulations nonetheless. Uh, I just want to say really quickly that Look Both Ways is an experiment. It was an experiment. I wanted to figure out a way to, to, to address sort of black childhood in an expansive way in a single book to show the whole world of, of, of that exists within black childhood uh, and all the different thin slices that make us who we are. Um, and this is just the tip of the iceberg. I could have written this book forever and still not touched on all the different variances um, of blackness as it pertains to our children. Yet all we seem to do is pigeonhole them as the coolest kid in the room or the toughest kid in the room when they, when they should be able to be whatever they want. I think that's where what freedom truly is. And I'm always trying to figure out what freedom, how to define freedom. And freedom to me is the autonomy of identity, right? I need to be able to be who I am whenever I want to be who I am, however I want to be who I am, and wherever I choose to do so. Uh, and I think that's what you're seeing in Look Both Ways. Uh, autonomy of identity, young people dealing with the world around them, but also dealing with the world inside them. And I think that's what my purpose and my mission is in all of my work. But for this one, I wanted to figure out how to put as much, almost like episodic, how to put as many uh, of these sort of instances in a single in a single story to show that, uh, to show that we are in an intricate patchwork of culture. Um, and that we should be, and that we should look at ourselves that way and wrap ourselves in that quilt, right? To keep ourselves comforted and warm. We don't need to be all one thing in order to be great. If anything, in order to be truly great, we must celebrate the fact that we're all completely different, different religions and different cultures and different skin colors and hair textures. And we, we march to our own drums and yet we all are in the same orchestra. Uh, and that's what Look Both Ways is all about. Thank y'all for, for showing it love. Um, I hope y'all are being safe and healthy and happy, and I can't wait to um, to hug everybody soon. I know some of y'all with your, your fancy hats. Y'all mad y'all ain't get to put them hats on this year, but don't worry. We, we, will, we will make it happen again very soon. I love y'all, and I'll talk soon. Greetings. I'm Megan Rose, and I'm presenting the 2020 Coretta Scott King Author Honor Award to Janata Petrus for the Stars and the Blackness Between Them, published by Dutton Books, an imprint of Penguin Random House, LLC. In this lyrical debut novel, we meet Audrey and Mabel, two 16-year-olds from different worlds, Audrey from Port of Spring, Trinidad, and Mabel from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Both are exploring and coming to terms with their sexuality. When Audrey's very religious mother finds her kissing the pastor's daughter, she sends her to Minneapolis to live with her American father. Mabel is contemplating a mix of emotions she's feeling for ex-boyfriend Terrell, her friend Jada, and Whitney Houston, all while feeling low-key sick. When Audrey and Mabel meet, they have an instant connection. Mabel is determined to help Audrey navigate school and her new life in Minneapolis. As their friendship blossoms, Mabel's health takes a turn for the worse. It is Audrey who then helps Mabel navigate a new reality. Together, they come into their own and fall in love. The Stars in the Blackness Between Them is a profound love letter to friendship, queerness, love, and loss. It's a must-read, coming-of-age story for everyone. Congratulations, Janata Petrus, on your award. Hello, I am Joel Davis, and I will be presenting the 2020 Coretta Scott King Author Honor Award to Kwame Mbalia for Tristan Strong Punches a Hole in the Sky, published by Rick Riordan Presents, an imprint of Disney Hyperion. Weaving our past into an adventurous, fantastical future, Mbalia has written an exceptional middle grades debut that explores old traditions and is filled with cultural allusions that highlight African-American history. After suffering the tragic loss of his best friend, Eddie, Tristan is sent down south to stay with his grandparents for the summer. During an encounter with the legendary Sticky Gum Baby, Tristan punches a hole into a world where African-American and African legends exist and are in need of help. Tristan, a grieving and reluctant hero, must find a way to save his new friends and come to terms with the one he lost. Mbalia addresses issues of the Black diaspora, mental health, and grief in an action-packed, engaging story. This title is exceptional because it is a cultural bridge connecting readers to the past and highlighting the power of Black stories, old and new. 
Congratulations, Kwame Mbalia, on your award. Hi, my name is Kwame Mbalia, author of Tristan Strong Punches a Hole in the Sky, and it is an incredible honor for me to be here with you today. But I have to begin by giving thanks because I am not here without the blood, sweat, and tears of others. So thank you, first off, to the awards committee for bestowing this honor upon me in the book. Thank you to my family, to my wife, Mallory, to my children. Thank you to everyone at Disney and Cake Literary. Thank you to Stephanie Lurie, who continues to teach me about writing. And thank you to Rick Riordan for writing books that two generations of Embalias are now enjoying. Thank you to the friends who give me an ear to vent, who exist in DMs, group chats, and group texts, and late night Twitter threads. Thank you, everyone, for allowing me to write a story that asks, how do we move through the world with grief and happiness, with horror and joy, with pain and with healing? In Tristan Strong Punches a Hole in the Sky, a young African-American boy is transported from our world to one in which African-American folktales and African stories and mythologies coexist. These stories have lived in my head for decades, ever since my parents introduced me to Anansi, to Burr Rabbit, to John Henry, to the people that could fly and High John the Conqueror, to authors like Zora Neale Hurston and Henry Louis Gates Jr. and Virginia Hamilton. They scoured for stories here and overseas in Black-owned bookstores in Milwaukee and in shops in and outside of Accra, Ghana. Tristan's introduction to these characters resembles my own, the awe, the majesty, the incredulous disbelief, an overwhelming sense of belonging. These stories, as in the book, as are stories in all books, are powerful tools to be shared with others, and when received, grant the reader or listener the ability to create and shape worlds, imaginations, and futures. So let me give you some truth. All memories are not created equal. There are sharp, bright bursts of recollection of events in my past, or even in our past, a cultural memory. Do you remember the joy when Black Panther, the movie, was first announced? The jokes, the anticipation. Do you remember the honor and the remembrance at Aretha Franklin's funeral? If we go back a ways, do you recall the exuberance when Nelson Mandela was released from prison? The joy of books and stories can be found highlighted with importance in my memories. I remember Friday afternoons in elementary school when my mother would pick us up and take us to the Martin Luther King Jr. Public Library, and we could check out as many books as we wanted. And my mother would be annoyed because I'd be finished reading all of them by Sunday, anxious for the next Friday to come around. I remember my mother bringing me home a book that she bought, not because it was my birthday or a holiday or as a reward, but because it was a new fantasy filled with magic and adventure, and she thought I might like it. I remember my mother working with me on reading, writing, on the art of language, showing me the beauty in the construction of a sentence. I remember my mother getting on long distance conference calls in the evenings with her co-writers as she worked on writing an English textbook. I remember traveling to Howard University so she could work in the historical founders library. I remember her reading my stories, sending her my stories, asking for her opinion. She was my first critique partner, my first editor, the person who talked and still talks about the latest issue of Poets and Writers with me. The first person I called when I learned that Tristan Strong Punches a Hole in the Sky had been named a Coretta Scott King honor book. And I remember being one of four children growing up, sharing a bedroom, two bunk beds, falling asleep while the stories of Anansi and Burr Rabbit played on a cassette player. So here is my truth. I am a river. Rivers are formed through the collection of water from across a wide area, and they sally forth through droughts and through floods as they carve their path. I carry the blood, I carry the history, I carry the legacy that comes from Doretha and Balia, and I pay tribute to the tributaries that are her wisdom and her hope, merging in me as I try to find my way to the sea where my people have long emptied the burdens they carried. This book is a thank you to her and the mother's life here, here and in our memories. So, let me tell you a story. Greetings. I'm Jason Driver, and I will be presenting the 2020 Coretta Scott King Illustrator Honor Award to James E. Ransom for The Bell Rang, illustrated and written by James E. Ransom, a Caitlin DeLoe book published by Anthenaeum Books for Young Readers, an imprint of Simon & Schuster Children's Publishing. Every day the bell rings on the slave plantation to the same mundane scenery and chores. Daddy gathers the wood, Mama cooks, they eat, then out to the fields. 
The seemingly predictable life on the plantation changes one day for the little slave girl and her family as they hope for her brother's safety and a brighter future for them all. Ransom's account of the monotony of slave life is captured in powerful but simple verse. This literary device is deployed with perfection against the backdrop of his lush double-page acrylic spreads. The bell rang as a masterpiece of a picture book, economically capturing in rhythmic fashion a sense of foreboding, brooding with elements of love and hope. Congratulations, James E. Ransom, on your award. Unfortunately, we can't be together to have our traditional CSK breakfast, but I have mine. I have some scrambled eggs, some bacon, and because I'm a country boy, I have my grits. But we're here to honor my book, The Bell Rang, and the studio is the best place for that. So let's go. Welcome to the studio. Come on in. And when you first come into the studio, one of the first things you see is my CSK Awards. Um, they're right over the doorway, coming into the studio. And this very first one is for Uncle Jed's Barbershop. And the next one is for The Creation. And the next one is for Before She Was Harriet, more recent award. And then as we go down, you can see pictures of Lisa and I when we were in college. And then you see some wedding pictures of us. But when I receive my plaque for the bell rang, it's going to go right here next to before she was Harriet. I can't wait to place it there. But I'd like to show you another part of my studio, my favorite part of the studio, which is right back here. And that's um, where I paint um, at the chair to your left. And this is my view of our backyard. And in this backyard, I see lots of animals sort of wandering through. Um, we even have an owl that we've called Hubert. But uh, for the most part, it's pretty quiet back here as I paint and listen to jazz. But you're here for a speech. I would like to congratulate my fellow award recipients and thank the CSK committee for honoring the bell rang. I would also like to thank my editor, Caitlin DeLuey, for her trust, belief in my story, and for her aid in helping me shape the bell rang into a story that we are honoring today. My art director, Sonia Chad Hasbanian, for her patience and wonderful and skillful design work, and all the folks at Simon & Schuster. I also like to thank my family because none of this would be possible without my wonderful wife and my four children. Also, I'm starting to really enjoy this. I won the CSK two years ago. Lisa won last year, and I'm back this year. We have to keep this tag team going. Me, Lisa, me, Lisa. Although it would be nice to share the stage with her. Receiving this award is particularly special because The Bell Rang is a book that I wrote and illustrated. In writing this book, I wanted to give my readers an understanding of what life was like on a plantation in the 1860s. The Bell Rang is a composite of many plantations from that era. Now, there's been a, a lot of stories that focus on enslaved people who ran, either by way of the Underground Railroad or on their own, leaving everything and everyone they knew to run into the dark of night, into the unknown, all by being chased. But in The Bell Rang, I wanted my readers to think about the friends and families who were left behind, how they must have battled with mixed emotions of wanting those they love to stay close, and at the same time knowing that escaping was their only chance for a better future. The bravery of those who left and those who stayed has been passed down through generations of people who fight, march, protest, sing, read, write, and illustrate books about their lives. The topic of slavery is uncomfortable. The reason why I illustrate books about enslaved people is because they survived, they fought, they resisted every minute, every hour, every day. Even throughout the most dehumanizing period in American history, 
Enslaved people found ways to maintain their dignity, pride, heritage, and joy. We need books on all facets of African American life, from the contemporary to the historical. But as they say, if you don't know your past, you don't know your future. Again, I would like to thank the CSK Committee for honoring me with this award and for continuing to bring attention to books by and about people of color and honoring the legacy of Coretta Scott King. Thank you. Greetings. My name is Irene Briggs and I will be presenting the 2020 Coretta Scott King Illustrator Honor Award. Infinite Hope a Black Artist's Journey from World War II to Peace, illustrated and written by Ashley Bryan, a Caitlin Dewey book, published by Athenaeum Books for Young Readers and imprint of Simon & Schuster's Children's Publishing. Ashley Bryan has masterfully illustrated this memoir of his life as a 19-year-old student. It was World War II and he was forced to interrupt his study at Cooper Union for the Advancement of Science and Art and was drafted into the segregated U.S. Army, creating an extraordinary multimedia effect of sketches, journal entries, letters, maps, photographs, paintings, and primary resources. He has constructed a visual feast to complement his amazing story. Within this context, he illuminates the harshness of life for the often ignored contributions of the African-American World War II soldier. His selection of artwork highlights a sense of promise and determination to overcome tremendous obstacles. The final result is an outstanding achievement, no less expected from this renowned author, writer, educator, and storyteller. Congratulations to Ashley Bryan. Good morning, dear friends of the Coretta Scott King Committee. I'm so happy that you selected my infinite hope for a top honor award in illustration. Yes, the art meant so much to me in doing that book, and I'm so glad that my editor, Caitlin Louie, was able to assemble so many of the drawings. It meant a lot to the friends in the army who were all stevedores with me. They were very gifted in the work they were doing, and they really loved my drawings and kept after me for it and seeing the drawings. And I would help them at times in letters they were writing. So the gifts went back and forth between the men and myself. I always kept sketchbooks in my gas mask, so whenever there was a break in the work, I could whip it right out and draw, and the fellows were so excited to see me drawing, they did everything to encourage me. And so we had a fair exchange of their gift in working and mine in drawing that went all through the war. So it meant very much to me that the book could get a wider audience through your recognition, and I thank you for that. Greetings, I'm Jason Driver, and I will be presenting the 2020 Coretta Scott King Illustrator Honor Award to Vashti Harrison for Sulwe, illustrated by Vashti Harrison, written by Lupita Nyong'o, published by Simon & Schuster Books for Young Readers, an imprint of Simon & Schuster Children's Publishing. Little Sulwe, whose name means star, is the color of midnight. She's the darkest person in her family and in her school. This makes her feel like she is not beautiful. In Sulwe, Vashti Harrison serves up a visually stunning book replete with bold, clear illustrations and soft hues of purple and gold. The illustrations serve to complement Nyong'o's poignant and poetic story of a little girl's struggle with color identity. Vashti's renderings of Little Sulwe and the mythical night and day goddesses give this book a magical light quality. Congratulations, Vashti, on your award. Thank you so much to the Coretta Scott King Committee and jury for this honor. Thank you for recognizing Sulwe and the work I put into making this story come to life. Um, Sulwe is a beautiful story about a girl who learns to love her very dark skin and see the beauty and magic that comes from within herself. 
Thank you so much to Lupita Nyong'o for writing these words, for sharing her experience and taking us on this adventure. She transformed a very personal part of her life into something that was so loving and so wonderful. Um, colorism is a complicated and heavy subject to tackle on a normal day, and here she's eloquently addressed and confronted it through the eyes of a child. I wanted to put just as much heart into illustrating Solway in the hopes that young readers will either see a reflection of themselves or discover a different perspective. No matter what though, I knew I wanted to take readers on a journey, um, transport them into a magical world, and make a book that was so beautiful they'll want to come back and read it again and again. Honestly, when I think of my own journey in art, it feels like such a blessing and achievement to be here and to be honored by the Coretta Scott King Awards for work that features and celebrates children of color because for a long time, I didn't draw black girls. Uh, my path in illustration was long and winding, so I won't bore you with the details, but even when drawing and painting wasn't my main career, I always drew. And for a long time, it was my dream to work at a big animation studio. I emulated the things I saw on screen and got caught up in trying to draw like the artists who had the jobs I wanted. Uh, I never really took time to notice. My inspiration wasn't very diverse at all. And moreover, I didn't realize I wasn't putting any emotion or any bit of me into the work I was making. If you go back and look at my old work, you'll see lots of girls with pale skin and long flowing hair, lots of mermaids and fairies and princesses, almost copy pasted from works you'll definitely recognize. Um, rarely did it include black girls, and, and that's true for when I was little as well, because I didn't see them represented in the medium and the style that inspired me the most. But there was a conscious turning point a few years ago, after getting several rejection letters in a row from one of those big animation studios, I finally realized I needed to stop trying to be like them. I finally rejected that dominant aesthetic and tried to make work for myself. Work that my younger self didn't know she needed. Magical black girls going on adventures. So for the last few years, that's what I've done um, at kind of a ravenous pace. Um, and I'm so happy it happened when it did because around that same time, Lupita gave the speech that inspired this book. So it is such a privilege to be recognized for an honor from the Coretta Scott King Committee for this book about a girl with skin the color of midnight. Thank you so much to everyone at Simon & Schuster who brought this book to life, especially editor Zareen Jaffrey and art director Laurent Lynn, who I worked with so closely to get these pages just right. And lastly, I want to thank my mom and dad for always supporting my art. Um, definitely my dad, who, when he found out about this book, called me to tell me every time he saw someone with beautiful dark skin to, you know, give me inspiration. It worked. So, thank you. Greetings, I am Lakeisha Darden, and I will be presenting the 2020 Coretta Scott King Illustrated Award to Kadir Nelson for The Undefeated, written by Kwame Alexander, published by Versify, and imprint of Huffton Mifflin Harcourt. The Undefeated is a poetic picture book that celebrates the persevering spirit of Black Americans. The powerful words take the reader through various moments throughout Black history that Black people had to endure or overcome. Nelson's beautiful oil illustrations highlight the power and sometimes the trauma of the phrases of each line of the poem. The Undefeated is a beautiful love letter to Black people that references what Black people have endured and celebrates the contributions of a select few from the past and a few modern heroes as well. Congratulations to dear Nelson on your award. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on when or where in the world you are watching this. As I read this speech, I am sheltered at home at the tail end of a nationwide quarantine and the proliferation of local and national protests over ongoing inequality and violence against African Americans at the hands of law enforcement 
that has become remarkably visible as the novel coronavirus continues to commandeer the attention of the country and the rest of the globe. Among the millions of my fellow brethren, I remain at home busying myself with numerous tasks while carefully looking after myself and loved ones as we all adjust to and contemplate this very tense and unsettled way of life for the time being. Considering this crucial moment, while I'm truly grateful to be bestowed with praise for the undefeated, it somehow seems a bit frivolous to read an acceptance speech or celebrate a literary milestone that seems to pale in comparison to the huge challenges we are currently facing. But as I look around the country and the globe, while many of our lives have come to a screeching halt, it seems more fitting to speak about this moment in history. Many of us are glued to our tiny screens as we follow our rapidly changing world. Schools, museums, galleries, and libraries have closed their doors, as have restaurants and department stores. Professional sports have canceled their seasons, conferences have been canceled or postponed, and only essential businesses remain open for the time being. Being faced with these very abrupt changes has encouraged me to take an inventory of my life and be grateful for who and what I have close to me. Although the country is mostly closed for business, I'm quite delighted to see that writers, dancers, fitness instructors, musicians, and artists have offered online classes and instruction for kids and adults, and that many readers around the country and the globe have taken the opportunity to fill their newly found abundance of free time with creative tasks, even picking up books to catch up on some much-needed reading. As an artist and an author, my professional life hasn't changed all that much. I've always worked in my private studio, often in solitude for long blocks of time, drawing, painting, researching, or writing, utilizing skills that are quite useful while the world is operating as usual. But at the moment, the world is anything but operating as usual. While many of us contemplate our new unpredictable and quarantined realities, I'm confronted with considering my place in the world as a creative entity. As we consider the present moment, I feel more than ever that no time is better suited for using our creativity to make something beautiful and share it with the world, a practice I learned from my mother at an early age. And as we confront our new reality for the foreseeable future, I am reminded that throughout the course of history, there have been many creative souls among us who with their pencils and paintbrushes and quills and paper and buoyed by their imaginations and well-crafted words and images have made it their purpose to document our shared experiences, help make sense of our ever-changing world and inspired us to continue to dream and keep moving forward. Artist Henry Asawa Tanner shared his soulful graces with his blessed painting, The Thankful Poor. Martin Luther King Jr. showed us a path forward with his I Have a Dream speech. Alex Haley and Toni Morrison showed America itself with their groundbreaking novels, Roots and Beloved. Maya Angelou, Entozake Shange, and Nikki Giovanni bared their souls with I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings and For Colored Girls and Nikki Rosa. Marvin Gaye showed us the world with his soulful What's Going On album. President Barack Obama inspired us with his speech, Change Has Come. Pablo Picasso, Norman Rockwell, and Charles White documented the absurdity of war and racism and the beauty of the human soul with Guernica, the Golden Rule, the Four Freedoms, and Folk Singer. The list goes on. As far back as we can remember, great artists and writers have inspired us to take an honest look at ourselves and with eloquent words and images have encouraged empathy, understanding, and hope for the path forward. When I consider their contributions to the global community, I'm inspired to continue writing, painting, 
and illustrating and creating works of art that contribute to the health and well-being of the planet and for all of us who inhabit it. As I reflect upon the present moment, I don't think there has ever been a time more important to celebrate literature and the arts and the dreamers who inspire us to sing, dance, paint, write, and create. For now, it may seem frightening and uncertain, but as I consider the history of the world and our country, I'm reminded that we've been here before. Our parents, their parents, and all of our ancestors who came before us have faced very challenging times in their lifetimes. The swift and sweet ones, the unlimited, unstoppable ones, the righteous marching ones, the undeniable and unflappable ones, the unafraid and the dreamers and doers, and all the brave individuals that Kwame Alexander so brilliantly writes about in The Undefeated. We as a people have faced the unspeakable, survived the unmentionable, and triumphed over the unfathomable. As a global community, as a country, as a people, we must remember where we've come from and be grateful for all of those who faced down adversity and lifted us up so that we may see the light of tomorrow. Nothing is promised to us, but while we're here, let us continue to celebrate one another, shine a light on all that is good in us, and work to brighten the dimmer places in our hearts and minds so that we may find peace in ourselves and with one another. As for the undefeated, I'm very proud of the work Kwame and I were able to produce. It was a tremendous joy to illustrate and provided a wonderful opportunity to tell the story of African Americans in a way that was honest, prideful, passionate, and reverent. Kwame's masterful poem left an abundance of room to create visuals that celebrated the past and present while also inspiring the future. With the artwork, I aim to bring the brilliant history of African American people into the light with spirited, striking, and colorful artwork that complemented Alexander's rhythmic, rhythmic text and to create art that inspires readers of all ages and backgrounds to embrace the African-American story as the American story, and to encourage and continue the conversation about our shared history. America is ours. We built it together. We will make it stronger together. Although we as a global community face pressing challenges, it goes without saying that I'm truly grateful to the Coretta Scott King Book Award jury and thrilled to accept the Coretta Scott King Illustrator Award for the undefeated. I'm overjoyed that you have chosen to celebrate this work. And with a profound sense of gratitude, I wish to thank the Coretta Scott King Book Award committees and all of the librarians who hold up the work that we do as writers and artists to celebrate the words and the pictures that tell our stories and inspire generations of readers to discover their own histories and find their places in the world. Thank you to my wonderful agent and friend, Stephen Malk, my publisher, Catherine Onder, and editor, Margaret Ramo, book designer, Cara Llewellyn, my publishing family at Versify and Houghton Mifflin Harcourt, my uncle Michael Morris, who taught me how to be an artist. My mother Emily Gunter for protecting and supporting my gift. My wife Jungmiwa for your love and encouragement. And all of those who came before me on whose shoulders I stand. As we continue to move forward and beyond our present challenges, let us be reminded that only together will we thrive. Together we will remain undefeated. Thank you.
Greetings, I am Lakeisha Darden and I will be presenting the 2020 Coretta Scott King Author Award to Jerry Craft for New Kid, written and illustrated by Jerry Craft, published by HarperCollins Children's Books, a division of HarperCollins Publishers. Craft's graphic novel offers a fresh, youthful voice to the discussion of race, class, and privilege by exploring how these issues affect black youth and how youth of color deal with navigating spaces filled predominantly by white faces. New Kid follows an aspiring cartoon artist, Jordan Banks, as he begins the school year at a prestigious private school. Jordan and his fellow classmates of color encounter various challenges from code switching to experiencing microaggressions from their white classmates and teachers. Jordan has to figure out how to navigate fitting into his various worlds without losing sight of who he is. Congratulations, Jerry Craft, on your award. Hi, this is Jerry Craft, author and illustrator of New Kid. I'd like to begin by thanking the 2020 Coretta Scott King Book Awards jury, chaired by Lakeisha Darden, who gave me one of the two best near-dawn phone calls of my entire life. I would also like to thank the ALA for making this moment possible. This is truly an amazing honor. I would say that it is a dream come true, but as a former reluctant reader, I never knew that this was something that I was ever even allowed to dream about. Today, my words can barely express the joy that I feel about joining the brilliant Christopher Paul Curtis, author of But Not Buddy, as an author who has won both the Credit Scott King Author Award and the John W. Newberry Medal. I'd hope to celebrate with you all in person but with social distancing being what it is, I know that's not possible right now. However, I anxiously look forward to the arrival of that day. Winning the Coretta Scott King Author Award for my graphic novel is such a great honor, not only because of the legendary African-American for whom the book is named, but because of the community of librarians and teachers, authors and artists whose goal it is to bring outstanding books to both African-American children and to the world as a whole. Books that shape lives. And knowing how much our books can shape lives is the reason why I created New Kid. When I was an adolescent, one of my favorite TV shows was about an African-American family living in Chicago public housing. They never had any money. The dad seemed to lose his job every single episode. The mom was a maid who used to clean the house of another sitcom character named Maud. The family never went on vacation, never owned a car. Every day was a struggle. And just when it seemed as if their life and luck was finally about to turn around, boom, calamity. And this show was called Good Times. I always wondered, when were the good times? Even the theme song was about not getting hassled not getting hustled, credit ripoffs, layoffs, and most of all, scratching and surviving. Those never seem like good times to me, especially not the same level of happiness that characters on other shows took for granted. And that's what I felt I was always up against, and not just as an author, but as a human being. As a kid, I was never a book reader because I was never exposed to stories about African-American kids with the same hopes and dreams as everyone else. So that was a void filled with TV. But even then, the choices weren't nearly inspirational enough. Fred Albert and the Cosby Kids played in the junkyard, probably the same one owned by Sanford and Son. It was like there was an unwritten rule that most of the characters who seemed to look like me had to be poor and struggling. But at least these were funny, so that was something. Since the day I self-published my very first book way back in 1997, my goal has always been to create a story that, like New Kid, is funny but also offers hope. Something that African-American kids can look at and embrace. Characters who expose them to a life that they can aspire to. As opposed to always showing them ways to live without the things, material and immaterial, that other kids are always allowed to enjoy. If I hadn't already noticed the need for a positive story like that, it became crystal clear years ago when I was asked to be the artist in residence at an after-school program for girls, most of whom were Black or Latina. 
I was told that with the help of another author, these girls had written a story that I was now supposed to help them turn into a comic book. The story was about a girl who tried to help another girl who was being bullied. The bully was angry. She was flunking all her classes. She was about to get kicked off the basketball team. And she was the only black character in the story. The bully had nothing to offer the world except for playing basketball. And now she was even about to lose that. The girls in my class had no idea of the limitations they had given their protagonists until I pointed it out to them. So we decided to start at the beginning. When we were done, our revised story had a much different portrayal of the bully. She was frustrated because she was having a hard time understanding algebra as opposed to failing all of her classes. Our new version had the bully and her target agreeing to tutor each other. One would teach algebra while the former bully would help her new friend to understand Shakespeare, something that she was really good at. She looked at the language of Shakespeare as nothing more than the slang of that time. Everyone was much happier with the final story. And this is what I've always tried to do with my work. We can't change the way that the world sees us if we don't first change the way that we see ourselves. We have to take control of our own narrative. Former New York Yankees superstar Joe DiMaggio once explained that the reason he always played so hard was that there was always some kid who may be seeing me play for the first time. I owe him my best. As an author, I'm very conscious of the fact that there will always be a kid who knows nothing about African-American culture. Someone who may never have had a black friend or black classmates or black neighbors or has never had a black teacher or been to a black doctor. All they know are the rappers and athletes who they see on TV or people who they see on the news. As a kid, I vividly remember reading The Snowy Day by Ezra Jack Keats. It was about an African-American boy who spent the day playing in the snow. He could have easily been me. To see a mirror in a picture book was rare. And the enjoyment I got from reading that book was also rare. A few years later, after I had self-published my very first book in 1997, I was now the proud father of two sons. Determined to make them the readers that I never was, my wife and I made sure that we read bedtime stories to them every single night. It quickly became the highlight of my day, but it wasn't enough just to read them Dr. Seuss. I desperately wanted them to see more mirrors than I ever had. Stories that were full of fun and hope and family. Although I returned to the snowy day, by then, as an author, I was also a lot more interested in the writers and the artists of these books that I saw. In my mind, the snowy day was a book that I imagined being drawn by a living legend such as Jerry Pinckney, who had captured a slice of life to create arguably one of the most famous children's picture books to ever feature a kid of color. I must admit that I did have a slight twinge of disappointment when I realized that this was not the case. So, slowly but surely, we began to build our kids' library. Max Paints the House by Ken Wilson Max, Grandma's Records by Eric Velasquez, books by Kadir Nelson, titles published by Just Us Books, and anyone named Pinckney, to name a few. As my sons got older, we moved on to chapter books. And even though I didn't know exactly what those stickers on the cover of Bud Not Buddy were, I knew it meant that we were in for a treat. But never in my wildest dreams did I ever think that a book of mine would one day earn these same stickers. In fact, even though I was already publishing my own books, I don't think I would have gotten here today without the help of a few more mirrors, but not characters from books, but fellow writers whose own storied careers I didn't always know when I first met them. Like the time I had an amazing breakfast before the kickoff of the Hudson Children's Book Festival with two of the nicest 
most interesting people ever. I sat there like a kid listening to their stories over pancakes. It was only later that I learned of the accomplishments of my new breakfast buddies, Walter Dean Myers and Jacqueline Woodson. I just thought they were nice. That was a really great breakfast. Or the time I was invited to a human bookstore in New York City, where another author and I talked to kids via Skype in Ghana. Afterwards, the two of us discussed our desire to get published and how we were literally selling our self-published books out of the trunks of our cars. A few years later, I watched with pride as Kwame Alexander got to win a Newbery Medal. Or the time I got a Facebook flashback showing me that five years prior, I had been on a panel with Jason Reynolds. That's who that was? I remember asking myself, while also being amazed at how much he had achieved in the time since our panel. I remember sharing stories after stories with another author about our countless rejections and how tough the road to getting published had been. We wondered if it was finally time to go back to getting a regular job. Years later, Derek Barnes went on to seemingly win every award ever created. I also remember having dinner with Renee Watson and learning that she had just won a Newbery honor for her amazing book, Piecing Me Together. Then on the drive home, sadly, I picked up my phone and asked the question, Siri, what's a Newbery? Through it all, I also had the comfort of knowing that I could call up my buddy Eric Velasquez, even at 2 a.m., because he would be up painting, and we'd keep each other company while we worked to meet our deadlines. And he'd be sure to call me out if I ever wanted to cut a corner to finish a book a little faster. I also enjoyed seeing Andrew Davis Pinckney literally everywhere I went, not knowing that one day she would be responsible for the first two trade book publishing contracts that I would ever sign. Those were my mirrors. This is my strength. In December of 2017, thanks to my amazing agent, Judy Hansen, New Kid finally found a home with HarperCollins. And I knew that my struggle to find a publisher to tell my story was finally over. My book launched on February 5th, 2019, and the rest, as they say, is history. In closing, I would like to thank my family, Aaron, Jay, and Ortier, for the love and support throughout this 30 year roller coaster to become an overnight success. My amazing team from HarperCollins for believing in me enough to give me the opportunity to tell my story my way. Thank you to my fans, the teachers, the librarians, the book groups, the award committees. Thank you to my mirrors who showed me what I could do if I just stuck with it just a little bit longer. And once again, thank you to the Credit Scott King Book Awards jury and to the ALA. Thank you. This year marks the 10th anniversary of the Virginia Hamilton Award for Lifetime Achievement. The annual award is presented in even years to an African-American author or illustrator for a body of their published books for children and or young adults and who have made a significant and lasting literary contribution. The recipient of the first Virginia Hamilton Award for Lifetime Achievement was Walter Dean Myers in 2010. In odd years, the award is presented to a practitioner for substantial contributions through active engagement with youth using award-winning African-American literature for children and or young adults. Dr. Henrietta M. Smith was the recipient of the first Practitioner Award in 2011. The award is named in memory of award-winning children's author Virginia Hamilton. Hamilton wrote more than 35 books throughout her career and received numerous awards including the Coretta Scott King Book Awards, the Newbery Medal, and a host of others. Congratulations to all of our recipients from 2010 to 2020. For over four decades, Mildred Taylor's historical fiction has transported readers into the lives of the Logan family, chronicling the complicated realities of segregation and intense racism in the Deep South. 
her personal perspective, honesty, and age-appropriate insight reveal the suffering and triumph of discrimination through enduring narratives. Taylor's lengthy, successful writing career has influenced many African-American writers. Her books have been integrated into the curriculum in classrooms across the country, supporting in-depth exploration of social justice and equity. Her entire body of work has been recognized globally and continues to serve as an empowering source of truth and realism. Mildred D. Taylor, for your exceptional writing and storytelling skills, the Coretta Scott King Virginia Hamilton Award for Lifetime Achievement is presented to you as a testament to the impact your unique, enduring works continue to have on readers of all ages. Mrs. Taylor was unable to join us for this virtual ceremony today, but the members of the jury and the entire Coretta Scott King Committee gladly accept this award on her behalf. Thank you for celebrating these outstanding authors, illustrators, and books with us.